Hey guys, finally back after having a few days off uh, with kind of a nasty cold. Still a little nasally and I apologize for that. But I wanted to get down here as soon as I could and do a video on the brand new Robo 3D 3D printer I just got. It took about 14 weeks to get this thing after ordering. They told me 8 to 12 weeks, took a little bit longer. Got a little antsy at the end there, but it did finally arrive and I'm super happy and I'm super stoked to get to use this thing. Over the last few days when I got a chance to come down here and use it, I did some calibration prints to make sure that I had the machine set up uh, close enough to where I felt comfortable to try and uh, print my own parts. The uh, machine took, I probably had about eight hours in calibration just to make sure that I had everything as flat as I could, I had my temperatures right, had my little, the distance from the extruder off of the bed correct. All those different little things, there was a lot of little tweaking things that I had to get to do to really get it to put out a good print. But I do believe that I've got it working pretty well now. There's a lot of other people out there uh, messing with these printers and putting out some great videos. And uh, Barnacles Nerdgasm, weird name of a channel, but uh, he's probably got some of the best videos with a couple simple little fixes and uh, some cool little tips and things like that. And uh, it, I found his channel that way and it's, uh, it's been interesting to watch some of his uh, experiences with it as well. But for me, I'm going to use this as a hobbyist who uh, plans to draw his own models and then print his own parts. I'm not looking to produce parts for other people or do a bunch of contract printing or anything like that. So for now, my plan is just that I've got a new toy down here in the shop and I hope to uh, allow it to bring my projects to kind of a new level. If you're not familiar with my channel, what I do mostly is centered around RC cars, uh, hand built or uh, heavily modified models of mostly off-road type vehicles. After doing my very first calibration prints, one of the very first things I did is I wanted to just try a model of my own. So I came down here, did a real quick uh, five or 10 minute model of a simple grill. The uh, application for this thing was for my Scout 800 Woods Runner project. And this was an all hand-built body. It's uh, all steel body panels, except the very front end, which I made a buck for and then vacuum formed a styrene grill for. Well, the one thing that I wasn't happy with on that grill shell was the actual center, the, the mesh grill area. I had come up with something to try and make that look uh, like a grill, and in the end I just really wasn't that happy with it. So I came up with this model, took about uh, five or ten minutes to actually draw the model, and then I sent it to the 3D printer, it took about 20 minutes for it to print. I was able to cut out the front side of this grill, and then that lip that runs along the bottom of that grill uh, allowed me to stick it in from the back and uh, shoe goo around it. So, a very simple part, but it gave the grill a lot more depth, a lot more dimension, and in the end, a much more realistic look. So, projects like this are what I'm really looking for. I also plan to look into uh, creating my own bucks with this as well as uh, possibly looking into creating uh, molds and doing like resin casting or silicone molding. There's a lot of different opportunities and things like that that uh, bring themselves up now that I can model it in the computer and it will do the hard part. Tonight what I wanted to do was I wanted to come down here and I wanted to model up a new part uh, run you through some of the very basics of that. I don't, I'm not getting into using the CAD software. If you guys want to do CAD modeling, go find a free program. There's tons and tons of free programs out there. Um, I'm an engineer by day, so I have access to a lot of programs, and that is why I've got some of the ones that I do. But the free ones out there are great learners. Go find something for free. Google it. I wanted to get into just a little bit of the basics of what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, not necessarily exactly how I'm doing it. And then I'll show you the programs that actually uh, run the printer, as well as the program that goes in there and breaks down the model into the individual layers that this printer takes to build the new model up. All right, so I spent a little bit of time here just trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to draw for a simple part to print to just make this example somewhat uh, fast and easy and a little interesting and I wanted to make something for the scout again sitting here next to me and 
just kind of looking over, and I do have a lot of plans for things that I would like to print for this. I would love to print a whole new dash that's more contoured and looks uh, a little bit more modern style with the gauge bezels and things like that. But that's not what I'm looking to do right now. I was looking for something a little simpler, and a little easier. So I was looking towards the center console because it's pretty bare and wide open. And uh, when I just ran upstairs to grab something to drink, I decided I should put cup holders in there. So I'm going to draw some cup holders. I don't know, something simple, something fairly ridiculous, and uh, something that this thing's missing. There is these little, you know, scale soda cans and all those kind of little things you can get, and uh, I'm not usually big on a bunch of little scale knickknacks rolling around in my car and things like that, but I did have one of these little scale thermoses, and this was made by a guy named Norm, who used to run a store called Team 36. Um, and he doesn't make these anymore, but uh, I, he had sent me a bunch of stuff a while back and I just ran into uh, one of the boxes I have and grabbed this thing. So I'm going to base the cup holders around this. I'm going to build two cup holders that sit uh, front to back of each other and uh, similar to like what I have in my Jeep JK out there. Uh, they are going to be sunken in, so it's going to be a pocketed type deal that I'm going to cut that center console a little bit so that I can come in and drop these in and then you'll be able to sit there and drop this little thing into place. The very first thing I'm going to do is uh, start off by grabbing the physical dimension of this part, uh, just a little bit over 10 millimeters. Most everything I do, I'll do in millimeters. Uh, I find it a lot easier to use on this scale of thing. Plus, these RCs are mostly uh, based around metric, so uh, it's just easier to work in one system. All right, so that's the finished uh, part there. A very simple little part, and uh, that's what we're gonna use for this demonstration. So I'm gonna export this file as an STL file, and that's what I'll bring into the program that uh, slices this model down in, and actually controls the printer. All right, so now that we're in the uh, program that runs the printer, I'm gonna import our part. and it decided to bring it in and uh, build it on its side, which that will require uh, support material to be uh, automatically calculated by the uh, printer. But for this one, I'm going to modify it, and I could be wrong, uh, but I'm going to rotate the part down onto its side. Now this will likely take a little bit of su uh, support material around the outside of it to support that outer lip. I had thought about uh, putting a uh, chamfer on the back side of that lip to support it, but I'm going to give it a shot this way and see exactly how that support material does and how it uh, is able to pull off. It's supposed to build it so that you can easily break that support material off without much, uh, without much effort. So this is the first time that I'm actually going to use support material, so we're going to see how that works. So I'm going to run the uh, slicer which this is what breaks the uh, part down into individual layers so that uh, the printer knows exactly what to do. Um, here you can see, well, I've got it in single layer mode, so you can actually break it down and see exactly how it does layer by layer. When you come in, it does an outside leveling path first, just so that you can make sure uh, that the extruder is doing exactly what you want from the get-go. It gives you a chance to level the bed and make sure that everything is running smoothly. And then it comes in and does the very first layer. The very first layer is a slow layer. Uh, it prints that at a much slower speed than the rest of the print. And then it comes in and it's going to build the uh, bottom layers, which are a solid uh, level because that's the bottom of the cup holder. And then from there it builds level by level as it goes around the outside. It, these odd shaped uh, deals around the, the uh, outside are simply that support material. It's not actually connected to the main part itself. It's got an air gap there, and then it's much less dense, uh, using less material, and then allowing it to uh, be broken off easily in the end. So, 
the final levels you can see are the uh, top where it all ties in. So that's what our part's going to look like. That's what all the levels assembled look like. And now all that's left to do is hit the go button and watch this printer work. All right, so the part is printed, and I'm gonna see how the support material worked and see how that whole process goes about removing it. Uh, it comes off the bed nice and simple, but now I've got the part with the support material still uh, attached to it. So uh, I've never done this before, and I'm gonna try and just simply uh, push it out, and we're gonna see how that works. Well. Simply uh, putting light pressure on it by hand uh, didn't seem to, to pry it <laughs> free quickly. Uh, so I'm going to try and uh, just put a little bit of pressure on it with the uh, razor blade and see if that can uh, remove it from its uh, support material. Alright, I was able to break all that support material off and uh, it didn't take too much effort to do that. So after that, we have our little uh, cup holder here. Fairly simple little part. We'll uh, grab our little thermos and uh, try and test fit it real quick. Um, that's a snug fit, but not. it doesn't take too much pressure to get it down in there. And uh, there we have it. Now I want to give you an idea of what the surface finish is. There you can see. You can see the striations in it. Now. As I go, I'll learn different ways and things like that that I would like to finish these parts. But so far, uh, on a couple of the test pieces that I did when I was trying to uh, play with surface finish, I've been taking some uh, like 120 grit sandpaper and getting down a little bit and then taking some 400 and smoothing it off. And that gives me a nice uh, just matte or uh, flat uh, finish but it's nice and smooth and doesn't have any of those uh, striations in it. So I'm going to do that real quick. and. Uh, That'll kind of wrap up the actual printing and finishing part before I actually go to do uh, before I actually go to install it in the scout. So after about 30 seconds of sanding, there is our final surface finish. You can tell it's just a uh, flat, no no striations or anything like that, uh, simple finish, and you won't really be able to tell exactly uh, what that would be as far as the construction material type if you uh, just took it at a glance. So um, little things like that are techniques I'll perfect or uh, get much better at as I go, as I print different parts and as I find uh, exactly what I plan to do with this printer in the end. But uh, I'm going to do some uh, working on getting the uh, holes cut in the Scout's uh, center console for this to be accepted in it and that will kind of wrap up uh, the project. Alright, so took a few minutes, took the uh, truck in there and hit the uh, center console with a drill Dremel and popped in the cup holders and that's it. That's all for this project. Uh, you know, just an example of a incredibly ridiculous and simple application of the new 3D printer. So I'm sure I will be adding all kinds of these absolutely pointless things uh, to my builds just because I can now and I'm really looking forward to doing things just like that. So that's going to be it for this video guys. You'll see way more of this thing than you're probably interested in seeing but it's my newest toy and there's no way I'm not going to play with it. So. Uh, check out the uh, other videos if you guys are interested. Uh, the February giveaway is going on right now. And if it's not February, check out whatever <laughs> month giveaway I've got going on. It's uh, the video that will be on the header of the channel if you're not subscribed. So uh, if you're interested, subscribe, uh, like, share, all that good stuff. And we'll see you guys on the next one.